Hey there guys, this is Michael Kandaxioglu of Sidemax Motorworks and welcome to our first track guide for Seto Corsa Competizione. Uh, today we're going to look at a lap of Silverstone in the Aston Martin Vantage V8 GT3 car which the team will be piloting in this year's GT3 Endurance and World Series hosted by the SimGrid. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel for more content and enjoy! Alright guys, so here we are on board the Aston GT3 car around Silverstone, just getting ready for a flying lap. I'm going to show you a full speed flying lap before commentating on it in half speed. All right, so we're just coming up to the end of our flying lap here, uh, crossing the start-finish line now. And that is a 156.4. So let's take a more in-depth look at that lap at half speed with some commentary. To set up for cops, we're gonna wanna be as far on the outside of the track as possible, even on the curb, breaking just before the 50 meter mark. It's a pretty aggressive turn in, but we wanna make sure we don't hit those curbs on the inside too hard, the sausage curbs, because they can really upset the car. We're wide open on the throttle at apex and we're carrying all that momentum right to the outside curb with the right tires right on the white line. So setting up for maggots and beckets, it's a really easy flat turn in for this left hander, but we want to make sure this right hander is as straight as possible. We get all the way on the inside curb there and then breaking in a straight line here, we want to make sure we don't carry too much speed through this left hander because we want an outside inside outside line through beckets here as much as possible car tends to understeer here. We want to get on throttle as soon as possible, just wait for the right moment and carry all that momentum down the hangar straight. This is one of the most important sections on the track and it's really important to focus on keeping your hands nice and slow through there so you don't induce too much weight transfer because that can really upset the car and then you're losing time with oversteer. Okay, so fast forwarding to stow here, we break just about halfway in between the sign and the outside curb, get all our braking done in a straight line and it's a nice, smooth, easy turn in and a late apex but all the way on the inside curb also really smooth with the throttle application so we don't upset the rear end of the car, bringing all that momentum all the way to the outside curb once again with the right side of the car on that white line. Use as much of the track as possible, so braking for bail in between the sign and the outside curb again, shifting all the way down to first, and we're turning in. We want to make sure that we don't carry too much speed so we can keep the car positioned on the left side here before we turn into the right handers and keep this steering arc as wide and consistent as possible so that we carry as much momentum and speed as we can through here. We're wide open on the throttle here through the second kink and we can use all this outside curb if we need to. So now we're on the back straightaway and we need to think about setting up for Abbey. So we want to use all the track once again. So before turning into Abbey, we're going to go all the way onto the outside curb. Maybe a dab of brake if, if we're feeling some understeer, all the way on the inside curb again. We're basically straight lining Abbey as much as we can. And then we can kind of hook the left side of the car on this curb to make sure that it rotates through there. And now focusing on the braking point for Village, which is right at the beginning of the outside curb here, braking all the way down to first to get the car rotated in the Aston. 
Uh, we're going to apex right at the sausage. Make sure we don't let the car wash out too wide here because we need to focus on setting up for the loop. So we come outside again for the loop, but we need to make sure we're not too far outside there in racing conditions because that's a prime overtaking opportunity. The loop's a very classic outside, inside, outside corner. We need to make sure we're not on the gas too early because that can induce a lot of wheel spin there and then we, get, uh, we lose a lot of momentum down this really long straightaway and therefore lose a lot of time. That left hand kink should be an easy wide open. You can go all the way on the inside curb and you can use the outside curb if necessary again on the straightaway here. So coming up to Brooklyn's, which is trail break city, it's probably the most complicated corner to get right on the track. So we're gonna start braking right before this sign here while turning in slightly so that we get the car starting to rotate and then we turn in more when we get off the brakes to apex really late on that inside curb right there. Letting the car wash out, we can use this speed here and uh, Luffield's kind of like a double apex corner in GT3 cars. We apex really early there, you can see, and now we're gonna apex again late so that we get a really good ape, uh, sorry, exit. Wanna make sure that we're not too hard on the throttle like I was right there because we can induce some oversteer and that loses you momentum once again down the front straightaway. This kink is basically not a corner. We can drop the right front down on the outside of the curb and that is a lap of Silverstone. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching right up to the end of the video. Uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe if you want to see more content. And uh, feel free to leave your feedback in the comments below so that we can improve for next time. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot.